The governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, once hailed as a COVID-19 god who used his, used his wizard, used his wizardly powers like a like a magic wand to basically bippity boppity boop COVID away from the from New York, the massive city and, and, and New York abroad um, easily just. He was ba- he was basically he was basically like a, ma- uh, a celebrity. He was up there right next to Donald Trump when COVID was hitting the way that, it, that he was uh, handling it. Oh, my gosh. He even wrote a little book about how how well he did. He was just being you know thrown up into the limelight. Incredibly so. He was even um, uh, in, in pre in preliminary polling. Uh, one of the one of the uh, top people to run if Joe Biden isn't running one of the top people I think if not the top person during the summer uh, uh, one of the top people running for contention for the 2024 uh, Democratic primary if Joe Biden wasn't to run he was really up there when it came when it came to Democrats and how he's just seen generally in, in America and abroad uh, across the country but that seems to be changing with Andrew Cuomo now under the uh, investigative eye. He's on being the way he, that he handled COVID-19 in the state is being put under the microscope after it seems like there may have been some uh, uh, unethical changing of some COVID-19 data to make it a lo- look a little bit more favorable to the governor. Um, and even people like AOC came out to talk about how he needs to be investigated for his role in that alleged change. And how many people actually died in uh, in nursing homes uh, in New York. But on top of that, it's not over. The cringe isn't over for Andrew Cuomo because now he's being accused of sexual harassment. ex a detail sexual harassment claims against Governor Cuomo. Lindsay Boylan, Boylan, wait. Boylan. Boylan. Lindsay Boylan accused New York governor of kissing her in his office in 2018. She left the job as a special advisor to him soon after. Former aide to Governor Andrew Cuomo published a lengthy essay on Wednesday morning accusing the governor of sexual harassment and outlined several unsettling episodes, including an unsolicited kiss in his Manhattan office. Uh, The aide, Lindsay Boylan, uh, described several years of uncomfortable interactions with Mr. Cuomo, a third-term Democrat, including an invitation to play strip poker on a government airplane and an email from another top aide suggesting that the governor thought she was a better-looking sister of another woman. So, um, listen, I have limited, as, as a streamer, uh, I have limited experience with women uh, in, in my life. You know, I haven't had too many girlfriends. I, I'm single at the moment. Uh, but w- with that being said, I do know one thing is that women usually do not uh, like it when uh, you <laughs> you uh, in a professional setting, you comparing their physical attractiveness to other women um in an extremely unsolicited manner and also unsolicited uh touching of them just try not to touch them okay don't do that that's not good it's really not good especially trying to kiss them that's that's bad that's real bad uh as far as i know i wouldn't like that personally um and uh women usually don't like it either i know i'm not one okay women women are complicated sometimes they can even be scary um uh talking to them uh, i get a lot of anxiety but you know none of that has ever brought me to um do anything like this uh, Ms. Boylan, who worked as a state as the state's economic development agency at the time, published an email in December 2016 and said the governor had become had began calling her the other woman's name in the professional setting uh, and experience an experience that she degra- described as degrading. So he so he said that she's the prettier sister to another lady and then started calling her, her that lady's name, which is really, really weird. And then they released a statement as well saying Miss Boylan's claims uh, of inappropriate behavior simply false, said the press secretary. So here's here's what she said. Here's what she wrote. Right. Um, This was written four days ago. And uh, this is her. She put this out on uh, Medium. We're flying home from an October 2017 event in Western New York on his taxpayer funded jet. He was seated facing me so close. Our knees almost touched. His press aide was uh, to my right and the state's trooper behind us. That's exactly what I was thinking. I responded sarcastically and awkwardly. Um, So he said, let's play strip poker. And then 
She says, that's exactly what I was thinking. I responded sarcastically and awkwardly. I tried to play it cool. But in that moment, I realized just how uh, acquiescent I had become. Governor Cuomo had created a culture within his administration where sexual harassment and bullying was so perverse that it is not only condoned, but expected. His inappropriate behavior towards women was an affirmation that he liked you, uh, that you must be doing something right. He used intimidation to silence his critics, and as you dared, and if you dared to speak up, you would face consequences. That's what I. That's why I panicked the morning of December thirteenth. While enjoying a weekend with my husband and six-year-old daughter, I spontaneously decided to share a small part of the truth uh, that had been hidden for so long in shame I never planned to disclose. That night before the former. Uh, former Cuomo staffer I confided to me that she too had been the subject of uh, the governor's workplace harassment. Her story mirrored my own. Seeing his name floated as a political candidate for the U.S. Attorney General, uh, the highest law enforcement official in the land, set me off. Okay, so she wrote all of this, right? And she also detailed uh, a couple of things uh, where she was... Um, a, a, and talking to other people, Stephanie Benton, the director of the governor's office, told me in an email in December 2016 that the governor that the governor suggested I look up images of Lisa Shields, his rumored former girlfriend, because we could be sisters. And I was the better looking sister of the governor calling me Lisa in front of colleagues was degrading. So here's this email here for a little bit, a little uh, bit of proof Uh for, for what happened. December 14, 2016 at 7.48 p.m. Stephanie, it was a great trip, particularly uh, interesting at the GM plan this a.m. Thanks for all your help, if possible. Uh, please relay. Thanks to the government for letting me join again. Hope to see you. Uh, he said, look up Lisa Shields. You could be sisters, except you're, be you're a, the better looking sister. Really fucking creepy. Plained to friends that the governor would go out of his way to touch me on my lower back. Oh, no. Anything but the lower back touch. No, not this. No. See, the th here's the thing, right? Lots of you don't to pass. There's, there's very little reason to ever touch people. Right. In, in my personal life. And I live and I work. A pretty high speed in a restaurant. Uh, that's my that's my normal job, um, and even there, I find it very not. I, I I don't have to do it much to touch people, and then when I do, usually it's you know sh shoulder tap, like top top of back, like solar plexus tap. There's no reason for me for me to fucking like dig deep and like stick stick my hand in, into like uh, my coworker's fucking asshole um, to be like, uh, excuse me, and uh, may you scoot over a bit? I need to get through. No. You could just say, excuse me, or I'm right behind you, like something like that. And then instantly they're like, oh, OK. And they move. It's, it's nothing crazy. You, there's no reason. There's very little reason to touch people ever, especially on their lower back. That stuff, that stuff is just fucking weird. When I worked in a restaurant, I just went around groping people. That what uh, was that not normal? Maybe in your workplace environment, <laughs> um, it, it, it could have been. But uh, for me personally, where, where I work, usually groping people is seen as a, uh, a no, no. Um, at it, if I could, uh, put it, uh, easily, if you know what I mean, she goes on to talk a little bit about, uh, things that she was sent, uh, as well. I complain, oh, sorry, my bad, lower back, arms and legs. So yeah, also, I, I, I don't know. I just, there's very little reason to touch people generally. And just the way that lots of people like to touch women in particular is really weird. Like really like the, the lower back type shit, fucking weird thighs, like legs, no reason, no reason. No, stop, stop. Okay. Stop. All right. The women, they're just kind of sitting there. They're not they're not trying to be sexual at all. They're just trying to vibe. And uh, you you uh, putting your hands on them is uh, in interfering in their vibe wavelength. And that's not cool. His senior staff began keeping tabs on my whereabouts. That's fucking weird. Uh, he is a sexist pig and you should and you should avoid being alone with him. My mother texted me in 2016. So more proof that she was talking about this long before this came out. Um, so she's been sitting on this for four years, four years time. The governor's behavior made me nervous, but I didn't truly fear him until December 2016. Um, and that's when uh, and that's when he uh, went in to uh, actually kiss her which is really, really fucking weird. The governor's pervasive harassment extended beyond just me. He made unflattering comments about the weight of female colleagues. Dude, 
dude, he's just a super sexist. And he's just like super fucking like old school sort of like uh, sexist big businessman. I I, I, I I like run my dick through all of my um uh, 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 people who are my subordinates uh, who are women because that's just what I do. Like this guy has absolutely no room to talk about people like Trump. Holy shit. If this guy ever said anything about Donald Trump, how he treated women, this guy just th- trash, trash. He has nothing to say, period. I was escorted into the governor's office, past the desk of administrative assistants, into a room where a large table of historical artifacts and the door closed behind me. It was my first time in in his Albany office. He showed me around. I tried to maintain my distance. He uh, he paused and pointed and smirked, and he showed off a cigarette box, a cigar box. Oh, fucking nice, dude. He told me that uh, that the President Clinton had given it to him while he was serving as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. The governor must have sensed my fear because... <laughs> He let me out of the office. I tried to rationalize this incident in my head, um, but at, that at least he didn't touch me. Uh, that made me feel safer. So, so yeah, he's he's just been incredibly creepy, incredibly uh, disgusting towards lots of women in his um, uh, in his space. And this isn't anything new. It's gone back to at the very least 2016. But the one, but okay. So lots of people. Ah, okay. You know, I mean, he's yeah, he's one of those dudes. He's not. That's not too cool. I mean, we we can think about this a little bit. For me in particular, I take sexual harassment claims extremely seriously. Uh, I may have brought this up before, but I've personally um been uh been been the victim of a false harassment claim that I had to have uh cleared up in my past. I, I don't. Uh, we don't have to go into that uh, at the moment. So I take these extremely seriously. Um, not only for the uh, not only for the uh, the uh, accused harass uh, harassee, but uh, the person who is being accused of harassment as well. I like to take these things very seriously. Um, and this is the story of one person that seems to be pretty well corroborated with things that she said, like in the past and and, and like um, uh, meetings that have met up uh, that, that seem to line up with the way that uh, history of these meetings were documented uh, from Cuomo's office. But that's not just it, because we talked about how there was one person who made who made accusations against Cuomo. There is another. Cuomo is accused of sexual harassment by a second former aide who was 25 and said that Cuomo uh, invited her to his office and asked, have you ever been with an older man? Uh, The aide, Charlotte Bennett, was an executive assistant and health policy advisor and uh, in the Cuomo administration until she left in November, told the New York Times that the governor had harassed her um, late last spring during the height of the uh, state's fight against the coronavirus. Miss Bennett, 25, was the most uh, unsettling episode. My bad. So the most unsettling episode occurred on June 5th when she was alone with Mr. Cuomo in his state capitol office. In in a series of interviews this week, she said the governor had asked her numerous questions about her personal life, including whether she thought age made a difference in romantic relationships and had said that uh, he was open to relationships with women with women in their 20s comments. She interpreted as a clear overtures towards a sexual relationship. So listen, if you're just kind of like vibing, you're doing your thing and like old ass dude fucking like. 60 or whatever. Like, I don't want to listen. I don't want to call everyone super, super, super old. Okay. But like the older, older dude, 60, who's like your boss. So it's asking you questions like, so, uh, um, you, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you ever had experiences with, uh, older men? Ooh, damn. That's, that's fucking crazy. You know, cause I, I personally, I'd be open to, uh, uh you know, some relationships with some girls, you know, some, some, you know, fresh women in their twenties, uh, you know, just not, nothing too crazy, you know, <laughs> it just, that's not cool. That's not cool. That makes everyone really uncomfortable. Me, I was uncomfortable doing it. You were uncomfortable listening to it. Everybody, everybody's not okay here. And just to think, I'm not, I'm just your streamer. I'm not even your boss. Imagine, imagine your boss doing something like that. <laughs> the term fresh women. Yeah, because they're not girls anymore. They just turned, they just uh, uh, got released from their chrysalis and they're now, they're women, fresh women. This is worrying. That all of these, that more than one, now, now, now there's extremely more than one person. It's it's starting to be more extremely likely. Like the burden of proof for Cuomo to overcome this 
this bar where people where these these things were lining up other people are coming out to talk about how they were being treated in his office the bar is becoming like exponentially higher for him to overcome to prove these things didn't happen okay unless he has like video proof of this time and date uh inside of his office of him not doing these things it's going to be it's it's pretty difficult for him to overcome these sorts of things um i i'm really interested in seeing what's going to happen to him come the future and and how people are going to be uh treating what's happening here right lots of people are drawing comparisons between this and um and and, and the tara reed story as well um when it came when it came to tara reed i i originally started off by saying this more likely than not is really true um things that came out afterwards made me feel like i i i, I doubt the, the 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 events that or described that were taking place but i'm one i'd be 100 percent for uh, if Terry Reid explained uh, the way that Terry Reid explained the situation that went down, I'd absolutely be for her uh, filing a lawsuit against Joe Biden and having that be hashed out in court. I wouldn't I wouldn't be against that whatsoever. Uh, if it if if true and there's more information to come out about that, I, I'd love to have that happen. People shouldn't be um, attacking any of these women for coming out with their stories unless uh, proven demonstrably false uh, for what they came out with. And um it's just really it's just really unfortunate that um that that these things keep happening that the 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 culture of uh of abusing women in these higher up uh places is not is not lost on people okay this is something that's been then that's this is something that's been happening for a long time and keeps a lot of women away from uh higher uh for from from higher employment uh, opportunities because it's kind of you gotta you gotta risk the good with the bad you know you you be um you be like a uh, like you know hunky hunky dory you know we're we're all vibing we're all having good times and then you deal with the sexual harassment or assault or or you go like really strong against it and people like retaliate against you or they don't even want to spend any time with you i mean i remember something that came out really recently that said lots of um, men who uh, who are in hiring positions and in leadership positions don't want to be in um, uh, uh, don't want to train women, feel uncomfortable training women and feel uncomfortable being in the same place as women. Right. So that is there are a whole bunch of problems here that need to be fixed uh, and they're absolutely not being fixed in, in the governor's office in New York. Absolutely not.